वेलकम टू ने क्लाउड अकेडमी अ जर्नी टू पिनाकल ऑफ सक्सेस In this session we are going to learn how to enable multi factor authentication that is MFA on our AWS account as well as set up budget alarms to avoid overspending during the process of our learning AWS cloud with free tier account so let's start our today's session what is MFA MFA is nothing but multi factor authentication It is a security tool to protect your account from unauthorized access. In addition to username and password to access the account, you can set up an additional authentication layer with MFA device so that you can protect your account with what you know that is your password and with what you have that is your MFA device. To enable MFA on your account Let's navigate to AWS console and log in to your account which we created in our last video. Once you log in to your AWS account, at the right most corner of your account, click on the drop down under your account and select security credentials. In the landing page, you can see a notification by AWS stating the root user of this account does not have multi-factor authentication activated. activate mfa to improve security for this account you can click on the assign mfa in the notification or navigate down and under multi factor authentication section you can find the tab called assign mfa device once you click on assign mfa device enter the device name to identify this device please note that name must be maximum 128 characters using alphanumeric and few characters Select the MFA device from the options listed below. That is there are three options which AWS provides us that is authenticator app, security key and hardware time based one time password token. Now let's understand what each one of them mean. Authenticator app. This is an app which you can download from App Store on your mobile which will generate codes for you to authenticate your login each time to your AWS account. The AWS recommended Android and iOS compatible authenticator apps are Authy Authenticator, Duo Mobile, LastPass Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator and Symantec PIP. You can use any one of them to authenticate your login. Next we have security key which is to authenticate using a code generated by touching a UB key or other supported Fido security keys. Fido is a certified hardware security keys are provided by third party providers such as Ubico. Ubi key is just like a USB device which you can insert into your USB port like you are seeing in the picture and just touch the Ubi key to verify that you are a human and not a remote hacker. This is integrated partner and not AWS own device. Third one is hardware TOTP token which will authenticate using a code displayed on a hardware time based one time password token a hardware totp token generates a six digit numeric code based upon a time based one time password algorithm these are provided by thales a third party provider these tokens are for use exclusively with aws accounts you can purchase these tokens directly from amazon or from the manufacturer as a key fob or display card devices You can see one of the device displayed here. For our today's demo, we'll go ahead with Authenticator app option. I have Google Authenticator installed on my mobile. So once you select your required option, click on Next. If you have selected Virtual MFA device and have downloaded the application on the mobile, you will have to open the app and scan the QR code that is being displayed. Once you scan the QR code, the app will generate a unique Authenticator key. Enter the first key in a MFA code one text box. Wait for few seconds for the second key to be generated. Once you have the second key, enter the second key in the MFA code two text field. After you enter, click on Add MFA. You get a successful registration message indicating that the device is registered successfully. So for the next login to your account you need to enter both password and auth key generated by your device to log in successfully to your account. Let me demonstrate that to you by logging into the account. Log in to the console, enter your username and password. In the next screen it will ask you to enter the auth key. 
once you enter your auth key that you see on your mobile you will be able to log in successfully to your aws account now that you have set up amfa feature on your aws account there are some points you need to remember first one is you can enable up to 8 mfa devices per aws account for root user and iam user we will learn more about iam user in our next sessions second point to remember is in case you have registered multiple mfa devices with your root and iam user if any of the device is lost stolen or inaccessible you can use one of the remaining mfa devices to access the aws account without performing the aws account recovery procedure which is nothing but by verifying your identity using the email and the primary contact number registered with your account third point to remember if an mfa device is lost or stolen it is best practice to disassociate the lost or stolen device from all iam users it may be associated with fourth point is you can enable mfa for a root user only through the aws console whereas you can use aws cli and api operations to enable mfa feature for an iam user along with the console but for a root user you can only do it through aws console Fifth point to remember is root users and IAM users with Fido security keys can enable from the AWS management console only and not from AWS CLI and AWS API. Let's now proceed with setting up some budget alarms on our AWS account so that we can keep a tab on the services we are using and don't end up spending extra money while learning this technology. To do this, let's go back to our AWS console. Navigate to the account and select Billing Dashboard. Under Billing Landing page in the left navigation bar, select Budgets to go to AWS Budgets page. Alternatively, you can directly type AWS Budget in the search field of the services and select AWS Budgets in the search results and land in the same page. Click on Create a Budget. Under Choose Budget Type, you can proceed to set up budget alerts based on the simplified template or an customized advanced template. We will work on customized template later in our journey of learning cloud. For free account, let's use simplified template. We see that there are various templates that AWS is offering us that is zero spend budget which will create a budget alarm that notifies us once your spending exceeds $0.01 which is above the AWS free tier limits. Second is monthly cost budget which will create a monthly budget that notifies you if you exceed or are forecasted to exceed the budget amount. Daily savings plan coverage budget it creates a coverage budget of your daily savings plans that notifies you when you fall below the defined target. That means when your usage is not up to what you have planned for and paid for under the savings plan scheme. Next we have daily reservation utilization budget. It will create a utilization budget for your reservation that notifies you when you fall below the defined target. Now what are these saving plans and reserved usage? Both saving plans and reserved usage are for compute services provided by Amazon like EC2 that is Elastic Compute Cloud. They provide discounted price for your usage of compute service if you commit for one year or three year term. The difference between the two is that savings plan has no restriction on the type of EC2 you are reserving nor the region in which you are reserving the instance whereas for reserved instance you need to specify upfront which EC2 instance type you will be using and in which region you are reserving the compute capacity. I will be taking a detailed session on this when we are learning compute services in AWS. For now in simple words. Saving plan allows you more flexibility in reserving your servers than reserved plan. To add a bit more clarity, let me explain with an example. If say you have to visit a place on business trips very often and always look for a hotel room. Instead of searching a hotel room on every visit, you can decide on the hotel and room category and reserve that hotel room for the term of one year or three years depending on your requirement. The hotel management will then give you rooms on discounted price if you pay them upfront for one year or three years. 
The difference is that if the room was of type reserved, then you will not have flexibility of changing the room allocated to you for the committed duration. But if it was of type savings plan, you can take any room in that hotel or any other room in a different branch of that hotel which is close to your business meeting site, which adds more flexibility to your reservation. I'll be explaining these pricing models in more detail in our upcoming sessions. For now, I hope you got a fair idea about why we are setting budget alarms based on savings plan and reserved capacity usage. Basically, these alerts will tell us if we are consuming the compute capacity that we have reserved. If we are not, then we can modify our next reservation based on the consumption. For our free tier account, we will go with the zero spend budget option. Once you select this, you have to give a name to your budget, which must be between 1 to 100 characters. For the alerts, we need to provide the email ID where we want the alerts to be sent. You can provide maximum of 10 email IDs separated with a comma. Click on create budget. Now the budget is created and you will get notification on your email when any spend above $0.01 is incurred. With this, you can keep a tab on the amount you are spending and can stay within a specific amount while you are learning the technology. You can also track your free tier account usage by navigating to free tier under billing dashboard and verify all the services that you have you are consuming, the current usage of the services, forecasted usage of the services, month to date actual usage and month to date forecasted usage where month to date is a period starting from the beginning of the current month up until now. As I had mentioned in my previous videos, it is best practice that you terminate all your resources after you are done with your practice sessions in the free tier account. Along with this, some more points to remember about AWS budgets are First one, AWS budgets allows you to track and take action on your cost and usage. Second point, AWS budgets automatically notifies you over email when you exceed 85% of your free tier limit for each service. Third one, AWS free tier usage alerts cover non-expiring free tier offerings as well as 12 months free tier offerings, but the alerts don't cover free tier offerings that expire in less than 12 months, such as the first 30 days of using Amazon Light Sale. Fourth point to remember, you can monitor and receive notification on your budgets free of charge. Fifth point, budget alerts can be sent up to 10 email addresses and one Amazon SNS topic per alert. Sixth point, you can set budgets to alert against either actual values or forecasted values. Seventh point, actual alerts are only sent once per budget and per budget period when the budget first reached the actual alert threshold. Eighth point to remember, forecast based budget alerts are sent out on a per budget per budget period basis. They might alert more than once in a budget period if the forecasted values exceed or dip below and then exceed the alert threshold again during the budgeted period. Ninth point, AWS requires approximately around 5 weeks of usage data to generate budget forecasts. Tenth point, AWS budget information is updated up to 3 times a day. Updates typically occur 8 to 12 hours after the previous update. Eleventh point to remember, budgets can include or exclude charges such as discounts, refunds, support fees and taxes. Twelfth point to remember, there can be delay between when you incur charge and when you receive a notification from the AWS budgets for the charge. This is due to the delay between when an AWS resource is used and when that resource usage is built. You might incur additional cost or usage that exceeds your budget notification threshold before AWS budgets can notify you. Thirteenth point to remember, if a budget action is used to stop an AWS EC2 instance in an auto-scaling group, Amazon EC2 auto-scaling restarts the instance or launches a new instance to replace the stopped instance. Therefore. Budget actions is not effective to control cost in this use case. You will be learning auto scaling groups in the upcoming sessions. So in this section, we have understood how to enable multi-factor authentication and set up budget alarms on your AWS account.
with this i conclude my today's session thank you for your time and i hope i was able to deliver value for your time if so support me on this initiative of making learning aws cloud simpler and exciting join hands with me in reaching out to as many people as possible who are looking for such information by subscribing to my channel i will talk to you again in my next video until then take care and keep spreading the joy of giving among people around you this is Tasleem signing off for now